there it is. Oh, good. Okay, yeah. Let's uh, let's get that recording going. So again, welcome. Um, again, I am David Zaitchik. I am the uh, NCL commissioner, and also on the call with me here is Franz, who is uh, CEO of uh, Cyber Skyline, and we got quite a few things to uh, to go over today. So um, we've got some uh, community updates. Uh, we're going to get back in and look at the Canvas shell. So um, both Franz is going to give you a demo about how to import the shell into your own Canvas section. And then I'm going to show you um, what it looks like once it's, once it's imported and go over some of the changes I made and kind of focus on places where I'd like um, specifically or I'm looking for some input and help. And um, then we'll also talk about NCL, uh, NCL's Discord. And uh, the plan here is to give you enough information for you to be able to uh, sign up and sign in to Discord, because that is what uh, we're going to be using for the NCL for both the, uh, the playing side for the competition and then also for uh, future coaches calls. So becoming an important tool. Um, once we go through that, I do want to make sure we have plenty of time for our breakout room and our coaches' conversations. Um, last time, you had a few, kind of just a few moments to look at the uh, the new Canvas shell. And now I kind of want to have you guys spend a good amount of time in the shell, looking at it um, and coming up with, you know, any type of feedback, suggestions, um, any content we could add in all of that. So... That is the plan for today. First half, maybe less than half are our updates. And then the second half will be um, the breakout sessions and the uh, coaches conversations. So let's uh, jump right into the community update. And uh, Franz, I'll hand this off to you. All right. Thank you, David. Uh, so a quick reminder for the spring competition season, we just closed registration last night. So there are no more purchases of NCL game codes. If you have students who have not yet redeemed their game codes, that's perfectly fine. They can redeem their existing game codes for the entirety of the se season. Just keep in mind, the later they redeem those game codes, the more time they're missing out. Uh, in the actual season itself. So uh, highly encourage that you have your students get registered uh, with their game code. Um, we are currently in the middle of the practice game that is going from now all the way until Sunday night. So as a reminder, the practice game is not a required component of the NCL season, although we highly encourage and recommend that students participate in the practice game. If they are new to NCL, this is going to give them a lot of the um, preparation so that they'll know what to expect when they get to the individual in the team game. And even if they're returning player, it's a good way for them to quickly freshen up their um, their skills and get back into things. Um, on March 31st will be the start of the individual game, and then April 14th is the start of the team game. And another quick reminder is that the team game setup is uh, has to be completed the night before the team game. So if you still have students who have not set up their teams just yet, they've only registered themselves individually, it's fine. They don't have to rush just this moment, but make sure that they have that on the radar. I know a lot of schools like choosing their teams based on the individual game performance. That's perfectly fine. Just make sure you keep those deadlines in mind. Uh, moving on to the NCL at WESIS event. So last week was the WESIS 2023 uh, conference. So the Women in Cybersecurity Conference. We had NCL in attendance at the conference. Uh, we were able to meet many of you within the NCL community. That was a pleasure. Uh, for the CTF that we ran at the conference, we actually had close to 400 people registered and 263 who actually participated in the event itself, uh, which was a great showing. We previously ran the CTF at WESIS back in 2019, and we had about 140 people participate. So we have almost double the participation uh, now that we've now that you know COVID is kind of slowing down a little bit and uh, we're able to come back and run the CTF again. And this was over the uh, a population of both students and non-students. And what was really surprising was how many faculty members joined us for the CTF. And uh, we had a coaching center there where we were able to uh, answer people's questions as they were solving the challenges. 
and there were top prizes for the winner. So we hope to be able to do these events again at future conferences like at WESIS, um, as well as other uh, conferences. And so if you are involved in organizing any uh, any conferences, cybersecurity conferences in the in in the US, and you'd be interested in having NCL uh, at one of your conferences, please reach out to us. We're looking for as many ways to engage with the community as possible. So, um, you know, that's that's an open invitation for everyone out there. And hopefully we'll see you at a, at a future conference. Right now, we have the NICE conference uh, planned as the next conference that we will be attending. We will not be running a CTF there, but we are planning on having a coach meetup. Uh, and so if you're going to the NICE conference, keep an eye out. There will be an email going out to coaches with information about the coach meetup. And the NICE conference is um, in Seattle this year, and that's June 5th through June 7th. Oh, Franz, did you want to mention uh, how many players we have signed up for uh, NCL? You mentioned WESIS. Yes. So for NCL registrations, I always have to <laughs> refresh the page because it always seems to be updating a little bit. Um, but we are now at one second. Wait for it. <laughs> I'm getting a little loady loady wheel. Uh, so we are currently at 7,800 registrations for uh, this season of NCL, uh, which is quite a lot for the spring season. Last spring we had 66.33, and now we're at 78. So yeah, about 1,500 more players from this season. Uh, this season versus last season. Yeah, that's great. Good numbers. All right. Uh, so now I will move on to the Canvas shell. So for those of you who um, had not joined us for last month's coaches call, uh, David had shared the Canvas shell that he started creating for the NCL community. And the purpose of this shell is to help new coaches adapt NCL into the classroom or into their clubs very quickly by providing a source of resources and uh, practice like some challenges and some uh, assignments that can be very easily incorporated into um, into your, your class or your club. And in order to access the Canvas shell, um, there's a link there. It's lor.instructure.com slash search. Once you go there, that is the library of different published courses within the uh, Canvas collection. And if you just search for Introduction to the National Cyber League or just National Cyber League, you should be able to find David's course there. There is a preview version, which doesn't give you full access to everything in the course. If you would like to uh, have full access to everything, you can actually set up a free Canvas account if you don't already have one and import the Canvas shell into a class for you to use. So even if you're not using Canvas, um, it's possible to try it out. And something that we're looking at doing into the future is figure out how do we provide access to this Canvas shell in different LMS systems, because I know we know that everyone does not use Canvas. But I'm going to do a quick tutorial on how to actually go and access the Canvas shell. All right. So uh, I'm currently logged into my free Canvas account. Um, from here, what I'll do is I will uh, create a new course that I'm going to be using to import my cam the Canvas shell into. And so I'm going to say new sample course. So I've created a blank course. I can then go to the Canvas Commons and search for National Cyber League. David, has it disappeared from, <laughs> from view? There it is. Ooh, I just, just have to search time. for it twice. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, It's probably in the process of being published right now. But you can see here, there's a button to import or download the course. So what I will do is I will select my new sample course and hit import. And this might take several minutes. There's a lot of different files within the Canvas course. But once this is completed, if I go back to my courses, it will uh, it will show up in here. I'm getting my little indication that this is still being imported. 
And so I'm not going to waste all of our time here. I'm actually going to go and hand it back over to David so he can give us a, a tour of the Canvas shell. Okay. Let me pull that up. And I will start sharing my screen. Okay, so um, kind of jumping ahead here to what uh, the Canvas shell will look like once you import it. Um, I do want to mention it does look a little bit different when you find it on the commons. So just to differentiate between the two places, um, Franz just took us to uh, the commons, which is the place to find this shared shell. And here it is. So this is how you would find it. And then he just went through the import process. So I'm going to show you what it looks like after it's imported. Um, and again, I want to show you that it does look a little different here on this screen. So on this screen, you can see it starts with modules and look and you go through each of the modules. And the modules all correspond to uh, the categories, the nine categories within the NCL itself. So as you scroll through, you can see the different modules and the different content in the modules. And I just want to compare and contrast that to this here. So once it's imported, it does look a little different. And this landing screen, so when you click on home, this takes you to this landing screen. And uh, as you can see, very different than what it looks like uh, when it's just in the common. So this is, you've taken the common um, published shell and you've brought it into your own account. And now this is, this is what it looks like. So I've got the categories here at the top and each of these categories are clickable. So if you click on one of them, it's a link and it takes you to that particular module. And so you see, I just clicked on password cracking. So it takes me to the password cracking uh, module. The other thing to note too, is it, it has a kind of a nice introduction talking about first about the NCL, talks about the how the competition itself works, right? The difference between the gym, practice game, individual game and team game. And then it shows you what the nine domains are. So I have kind of the quick way to get to each of the domains up here by clicking on each of these icons. And then I've got kind of a more of a description of what these icons actually equate to. Um, also in here, I have got like my course expectations. So obviously this can all be adjusted for however you would want to teach the class. Um, that's why I kind of left the grading assessment blank. And so you can change that and add whatever weights you want. Um, and then We've got kind of my whole grading policy here. So this is kind of a, a placeholder for however anyone would want to um, grade once they brought this into their um, Canvas environment. So what I wanted to talk about was some of these uh, modules that I have. So I have, we're starting up here with the intro and setup. So this is just a basic, again, uh, overview of uh, National Cyber League and Cyber Skyline, a PDF for first time players. Uh, a link about how to create a bootable Kali um, instance um, so you can boot right off a USB drive. Um, and then I've got a couple intro assignments that uh, students can do. One I like a lot is the Bandit Challenge, which takes them through and they learn about um, Linux command line. Uh, then we go on to each and every one of the categories. So I've got open source. Um, as you can see, open source here is a little bit light. Um, I just have a link to browser-based tools. And one note too, is that I did change this up a little bit since the last time I, um, you guys went in and looked at this. All our browser-based tools are now linked to Google Docs. Um, and the reason for this is that um, we can update these Google Docs without anyone having to update the entire Canvas shell. So. Um, that's kind of nice is the, this, this is, um, dynamic. I can come in here and update this and no one has to update the shell with new content. So open source, um, 
could use a little more work. <laughs> I think if anyone has ideas of what else we can be added into open source, that would be good. great. Um, cryptography is pretty well um, built out. I've got um, the three lectures that I have here for you to look at um, and use if you'd like. Um, and then I've got a few labs specifically on cryptography and steganography. Um, password cracking. Um, got a few labs. This could probably add, we could use a little bit more. So again, what I'm looking for during our breakout session is I'm hoping that uh, if you have links to any open source um, tools or resources that you use, we would really like to get the feedback so I can include them in the shell and share them with other people. Um, log analysis. My log analysis is primarily built on Splunk. So I have students go through a Splunk tutorial. If you have other ideas, that'd be great. The only other content I have here actually is the three um, gym, NCL gym exercises. So if you have anything else that you would use for log analysis, let's look at that. Uh, network traffic analysis, I got a lot here because it's a lot about Wireshark. Um, forensics, uh, I'm a little bit light here because I really only have two labs. And again, these are both from the NCL gym. So this is something I'm looking for more feedback on. What else? What, what do other people use to prepare students for forensics? Um, and also scanning. Um, I do have information about NMAP, but given that not everyone will have their own little environment to do scanning on, I'm also curious as to what are people using to train students on how to use NMAP. Where, where are you having them use that and what labs do you have set up? So that would be great feedback there. Uh, web app, I've got a good amount here to walking through uh, Burp Suite. And then again, <laughs> more NCL gym assignments, enumeration and exploitation, big, assign big uh, lab here on Ghidra, which I think is an important tool to learn for enumeration and exploitation and uh, several labs, one lab based specifically on Ghidra called Here Be Dragons. And then again, NCL Gym. And that's pretty much it for the categories. So what I'm hoping that you guys will do during the breakout session is give me a list, give me a link, provide some more content uh, for some of these sections that are light, or even the ones that have a good amount of content, if there's a lab or resource that you really like, um, please please let me know. That'll be coming up during our um, breakout session. Dave, it looks All like right. we've got a question from Philip. Okay. Philip, do you want to ask your question here? Oh, I was just saying, I'm your forensics guy, doing my dissertation on it, so... Perfect. Good. So uh, when we put you in the breakout session, what we'll do is we'll have the a Google Doc once again. And I'm hoping that on that Google Doc, you can list any resources that you know of that uh, we can then use and add into um, this shell. Is this shell available to download now? Yep. Okay. That's exactly what uh, Franz was just uh, going through the demo of show. Yeah, I was on a phone call talking to NASCAR. So we're trying to promote our <laughs> esports team. Ooh, nice. And all this okay, other stuff. So, and Franz, you um, do you want to pull the agenda back up and the slides? And then uh, do you have that link of available, readily available, Franz, about how the you are a video that you created about uh, importing the shell? Yes. Okay. Yeah, there's a, the there's there. a whole URL there. So let me there it just, is. Thank you. Yeah, let me uh, let me copy and paste that and put it in the chat so it's okay. easier for you all to access so what Franz is referring to is he just did that quick demo about how to first search for that um, canvas shell because it's uh on, in the comments section and then how to then import it into your own uh canvas uh class and you can use the open source canvas you don't have to have a institution's canvas so uh, it's free if you use the uh, open source Yes, that's a great point. So if your institution isn't using and paying for Canvas, there's definitely kind of ways around that. Canvas has opened it up for instructors to use. Now, I'm, I'm 
guessing there's probably some limitations in terms of tying things back maybe to a central grade book and rosters, but it at least what I built will work for a free uh, Canvas account. And okay. if you, if yeah. you have, have a course uh, like we already had, as you know, David, we put we had a Canvas shell already set up, but we're taking the modules that you've completed and adding to our our uh, current uh, course. So uh, that works out pretty good. And you can break out the each module. You don't have to use the whole thing if you don't want to. Absolutely. And that's actually how some of my content I got from you, Stephen, <laughs> from your Canvas shell. So we're, we're trying to build up from sharing other pieces of shells to kind of create this one uh, hopefully definitive shell for people to uh, to use and share. Okay, so um, that contributing to the shell, that'll be the content, the, the um, topic when we go into the breakout sessions. But before we jump into the breakout sessions, um, I wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about Discord and how to join. Because uh, like I mentioned, during our next month's Discord, ne next month's NCL coaches call, we'd really like to start being, start using Discord um, for our breakout session in terms of communication. Um, so what we're going to do here is just kind of do another, a little intro so that people have enough information to sign up and sign in to Discord and be ready for next month's coaches call. So Franz, you want to? show us all about Discord. All right. Thank you, David. And what I'm going to do before I get started is I'm going to post an invite link to the Discord in the chat so that you all have that. Um, we have been noticing that a lot of students, a lot of clubs have started using Discord to organize themselves, especially when it comes to cyber competitions. And so we've started building a community on Discord. And this is a great way for us to share information with the community and also collaborate. And as David mentioned, we would like to be able to use Discord to share uh, sh share notes with each other, share resources. One of the ways that you can contribute to the Canvas shell is by joining Discord and then just dropping a link to whatever resources you would like to be incorporated in there. And so if you already have some sort of um, open source uh, GitHub repository with learning resources, or you, you would like to make some of your, your slides or any materials, um, accessible to the community. This is a great way to contribute. If your materials get incorporated into the Canvas shell, we'll make sure that you are credited uh, for your contributions. But the Discord will be the best way for us to collect that information and also have a conversation and get feedback and discussion um, because we don't want we don't want people just submitting it into a form and then it going into a black hole. We want to make sure that there's some uh, conversation about these materials to figure out how can we best leverage these materials and help each other. So if you're not already familiar with Discord, uh, Discord is a online messaging and communication platform. That's uh, great for groups. If you do not have a Discord account, you can create one for free. Um, when you use the link that I posted in the chat, it will ask you to either log into your existing Discord account or create a new one. Um, when you click on that link, you are um, you're gonna get the invite, and I believe that this link actually opened up. Um, <laughs> I have Discord running on another computer, uh, another uh, another tab, and it looks like it was uh, opened up over there. So I might need to go and. Um, Switch my display then. All right. So let me instead. Yes, I got, I got the invite. Everything worked fine, just as you indicated. Okay. Front. Great. Great. <laughs> I'm glad that that worked out. Um, I'm just like having some technical difficulties with the fact that I have like Discord open on, on uh, from the app and also from the. Uh, uh, from the browser. So let me get the screen share back on again. Great. You're no Jedi. Okay. Are you able to <laughs> see? I uh, will hit accept invite and then it's going to try to ask me to open it in the app, which I do not want to do. But now you can see that I have access to the NCL community server. Uh, we have some rules here uh, for everyone who is joining the server. Um, so just confirm that you agree to the rules. And then what you can do is go to the roles 
section here, the roles channel, and identify yourself as a coach. When you identify yourself as a coach, this will give you access to the coach's corner, which is a dedicated area for coaches to communicate and share resources. And this is where you should provide your feedback for the shell. And um, also something that you can do once you are connected to the Discord, we have an announcements server. You can follow this server and, and share it with any other servers that you are an admin of. And so if your school has a club server or you have a class server, you can follow the NCL's uh, announcements channel. And so every time there is a new NCL announcement that will get synced over to your school's Discord server so that you can make sure that uh, you're always in the loop with what's going on within NCL. And then your students also have that directly. So you don't have to worry about always uh, you know, passing that information on to them, playing a game of telephone. They should be able to see that directly if you synchronize the announcements uh, from the NCL server to your school's server. So if you have any questions about that, uh, we're going to stay on a little bit after the call today to help people get set up and um, also be sending out a, a video later to show people how to set that up as well. I will now switch over to our discussion time. Great. Okay, so yeah, we are now going to go into the uh, breakout rooms and again, um, what we're going to discuss is the Canvas shell. Um, and the idea here is to uh, discuss it with other coaches. That's why we do a breakout room. Um, and now would be the time, if you are not interested in going into a breakout room, now would be the time to uh, sign off. And we'll say we'll see you uh, next month. Hey, while you do that, can I ask you a quick question that it will be in our notes? Is the uh, is Discord only for the coaches, or is there a plan to move like the competition to Discord? Um, yes, we are moving the competition to Discord. Franz, did you want to add anything to that? I think you captured it pretty well. Yeah, so okay. Discord uh -oh. will be for the for the for the students as well, not just the coaches. And I know that. Um, uh, when we were doing the post game debriefs on Slack, some people mentioned that well, Slack only so saves so much uh, history, and so with Discord, those post game debriefs will kind of persist there, um, and so there will be a lot of opportunity for students to uh, collaborate with each other, ask each other questions, and then also get updates on what's going on the season, and also get the post game debriefs directly on there as well. So if you weren't aware, at the end of every game. There is a, a debrief where uh, we walk through how to solve all the different challenges and students will also provide their suggestions on how they solved it as well. All right, if I could, I'm sorry, if I could ask a follow-up question because, um, I, so I understand your rationale. I'm just like doing a face plant because now I have to try to get students into yet another collaboration environment. Um, <laughs> the uh, Is it gonna be for this season or, or cause it's, I thought we already had a Slack going. We we had a Slack, uh, but when we did our when we were looking at our survey results, all the students said that they preferred Discord over Slack. <laughs> like, it was it was like ninety to ten. <laughs> all right. Well, what what, what did Lyndon John say? The people have spoken. Those bastards. Yes. Um, <laughs> all right. I'll be quiet. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. So thanks for uh, clearing that up. We are. That's a good question. Yes, we are moving from Slack to Discord. Uh, for students and then also for coaches. So we'll all be on Discord. Okay, so um, thank you all for uh, giving us some more information about um, what you cover for your classes and what material you use. Uh, again, what I'm doing here is I'm trying to make sure that we are including um, all the right resources for new coaches or for current coaches. So the idea behind this, um, this Canvas shell is that any new coach or existing coach can then download this shell and either use all the material there, which means that it will take them less time to build up material to start getting um, students involved in NCL. We want to, as a community, provide all this material for, you know, amongst ourselves, current coaches, but also for new coaches, because it can, as people probably know, be a little daunting to 
incorporate NCL into your class and find all the right resources to prepare your students for the NCL. So that was the whole idea behind this Canvas shell is to, we have a lot of resources that we all use as coaches. How can we share all these resources and then make it easier for new coaches and also existing coaches to use that material to prepare students for the NCL. So again, that's the idea behind the shell. And that's the idea behind these breakout sessions is for us to be able to share information amongst each other. And that's definitely what I'm seeing in terms of more material that I could add to this class, to this shell. So this was some of the feedback from um, breakout room number one. Uh, I had that up for a little while, so I'm going to move on to breakout room number two. I, I was just going to point out one thing from oh, group one sorry. that yeah, no, that's okay. So <laughs> what the one thing I would I would uh, focus on and, and adding to the uh, syllabus if it's not already in there is uh, where I talk about uh, right lab reports and Karen can do that better justification than I can. But we the team really liked the idea uh, as a best practice of. And, and a couple of us never had even heard of Cherry Tool. So um, I think adding a module of how to document all your work and take notes is a really good thing to add to, to the show. Okay. Yeah. Well, and if we... I can say that was Cherry, I think it was Cherry Tree. So it's a Cherry Tree tool that's in Cali. It's oh, basically, even... yep, yeah, it's oh. basically, no, and yeah, I, I, I'm, I've been dealing with cold here, so, but it's, um. Notepad, it's like notepad with a file structure to it and it has um it's color coded so it's kind of nice great and then what do you use those notes for um i require students to write lab reports where every tool they would list the tool so um you know if there was they would have a category osint and then under osint they would have whatever tool they were using so let's let's just do um log analysis like say python they had something or oh, let's do let's say nmap they'd have to say what is and the NMAP wouldn't be an OSIM, but they would list a tool. What was the purpose of the tool? What was the outcome they expected from the tool? And how are they using it? And so, and like, what, what are all the, the, um, all the different options and flags to that? So that way they would have a whole list. They could go by category and then they could, it would help reinforce into them what that tool purpose and function was. Oh, and I had great. a lot, a lot of employers like it, and I my students have taken that notepad file and actually are using it live on their jobs. Nice, great, great idea, thank you. And so then students do then turn that in as part of the requirement. Okay, thank you. Uh, sorry, I, I muted. Yes, that was, that was their project grade, which is about 35% of the class. Perfect, all right, great idea, thanks. Okay, so moving on to uh, room number two. Um, any highlights that you wanted to have here, uh, Stephen? Uh, I just would point out that you mentioned uh, that the coaches' uh, tools, uh, we get more tools from our students than what we can come up with as faculty. I'll guarantee you that. And uh, so this is one of the, uh, this is uh, uh, from the, we, we, in our Canvas shell, we have a discussion boards for every one of the categories, but we also have one for this uh, this semester, we have one for practice games and we had one for just general information. So this is a, uh, I just cut and paste this out of the, out of the discussion for uh, the practice games. And we have a meeting, every um, uh, Microsoft Teams meeting every evening from seven o'clock until about however they want to go. So it's supposed to be seven to eight. Sometimes it goes till nine or 10, uh, just going over uh, these different areas and uh, each one of the uh, uh, categories. And then these are kind of like some of the tools that, that uh, we have. And uh, we record those uh, MS team meetings so that uh, a lot of students, since we have all online uh, courses and everything and students are scattered from Hawaii to Maine, uh, they can't always make the meeting, so they uh, have an access to, and there's a lot of good interaction between, uh, like some of them will say, well, I don't really like uh, Ubuntu, or I want to use Black Ubuntu, or I don't like this about Cali, or here's it. One of the other things is the uh, uh, the use of, uh, uh, of, of some of the uh, uh, common tools that are in 
in uh, Cali Linux. So anyway, this just yep. gives you some some examples. Those are the links to those. Cool. Uh, Great, and I'll make sure I incorporate these um, into the shell. So thank you. And I know we're kind of running out of time here at the end of the meeting, but I do want to give a couple more of the rest of the group some time to give us their highlights. So Chip, what you got? Uh, we had a couple of uh, brand okay. new coaches. So oh, we didn't get a, it was just a, a, a bit of what do we do? How do we, how do we encourage um, participation? And so most of us have tried to do it through clubs. Um, and then we talked a lot about make sure your first time students know they're not going to score 3000 points. Um, it's, uh, you know, encourage them to go for the easy wins and learn because just by going through the going through the competition, they're going to improve their skill set. Yeah, absolutely. And that, I think that's a great thing to do. You need to set expectations, obviously. So we want to make sure students know that they're not going to come in and solve everything or even close to everything. So I don't want them to be frustrated by not being able to solve everything. So yeah, I think that's great to set that expectation ahead of time. Okay, let's go to four. And Philip, I know Philip, you went through and showed us you have a great amount of forensic tools here. So that will really help uh, fill in my forensic section in the in the shell. So I'll go through and add some of this in. Um, any other highlights from you guys' discussion? Uh, we just wanted to make sure that we're keeping it in line with uh, what's going on with NCL and the forensics world. And looking at kind of like the challenges that are in NCL, you know, they're, they're kind of light. Uh, I think one of them would be just create a DD image because that's easy to do in a Linux box. Mm -hmm. That would be an easy lab. I and mean, you could just take like a two point, you could just take like a USB that's like a couple gig and make an image of it. Okay. So the practice of actually making an image, got it. Yeah, that would probably be a good thing uh, because I know that tool's already on Cali. You just DD hook up the mm -hmm. USB and DD whatever file name to whatever file name and you create an image, you create a, uh, <clears throat> uh, not an EO one that has metadata. The other one, this is the DD images. Um, right. The other one, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, 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 good. Um, Actually, so just, I, go that's awesome. That's an awesome idea because I forgot about that. Um, one year our students were trying to do that and I never, there was no, I didn't have anything formally created it, but that's a very important process. Thank you. Hey, hey, Dave, um, yeah. if you decide to ever try to go down that route, this is John Ticklick. I, I created uh, for my forensics class, a fun little challenge where the image is already created and then they have to like basically go find the steganography images and all that. It, it's next level, but it's, re it's really fun. Yeah. No, I think if you could, post that in your Google Doc, because <laughs> I would like to be able to look through that and see if that's something we can add to the shell, see if it uh, aligns with uh, helping students prepare for NCL. So yeah. And then one last thing, that video that I have of creating an image on that hard drive using Belkasoft, um, mm -hmm. it's an MK4. I'm trying to convert it. I don't know how well it's going to go. Oh, okay. But I can email you the MP4. Sure. Or Okay. Sounds good. Um, and Guy, you had a question. Will all the breakout documents be shared at a later date? Yeah. So what we're going to do is we'll go through and um, kind of summarize and we'll send out a not only a summary of these documents, but we'll also have the recording um, from this meeting as well. So that will be sent out in a few days. Okay, so let me quickly move on to the last group. I know we're a little over time here. Sorry about that. Oh, no, that was the last group. So good. So we went through all of the groups, I believe. Did we miss anybody? Uh, uh, David, uh, uh, real quickly, if you just give me one minute. Sure. Uh, so one suggestion that I have is to have another module that's called something like marketing. And imagine this, you as a, you as a cybersecurity teacher, you walk into a classroom, like a computer science department or a CIS classroom, and you want to be able to walk into that classroom, log into the Canvas portal, go to the marketing module, and then be able to have the students in that classroom be able to do a quick five, have, have multiple, have multiple quick, quick five minute 
challenges that they could do without, without having to install any software. And the challenges would have the instructions posted online. They would have the, it would have the challenge posted online. It would also have the, uh, the tool that they would need where they would go get the tool to solve the challenge. And then it's a, it's a group activity. So you could demonstrate, this is what an NCL activity looks like. We have a club that you could join. We have a department you can join, X, Y, Z. And it would be a good, good way to do marketing, to do outreach and to do other uh, uh, activities for other departments that are exploring uh, cybersecurity uh, 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 pathways. So it could be done at the high, it could be done as an outreach. It could be done at, cause I, like we had, we had career week last week on our campus. Mm -hmm. So I had, I had students visiting from a high school and I had to come up with, with uh, quick, quick, quick activities without them having to install software, without them having to do anything. Something that was real simple, quick, easy, and fun. Yeah, that's yeah. great. I like that idea. And I'm sure Franz, you, uh, you're taking Anyways, notes. Thank you. Right? <laughs> yep. I yeah. Am. Cool. Yeah. That's a great idea. And like you said, make it quick, easy, nothing to install. Um, just so students could get an idea of what the NCL is and obviously find something that's fun and engaging to, uh, to draw them in. I like that. Exactly. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Great idea. Okay. So again, thank you everyone for uh, participating in uh, this month's coaches call. Um, it looks like our plan is going to be to uh, do some more focus on this Canvas shell. Um, also, next month, I plan to have a Canvas shell that is more focused to the high school level as well. So we'll be looking at um, the current one that we're looking at now more for college level. And then also uh, the plan is to look at a high school level Canvas shell. So again, thank you, everyone. We will see you again uh, next month. And if you do want to uh, stay on at the end uh, here, we will, uh, we're here to help you guys get set up on Discord. So if anyone wants to stick around for a moment, you have how to get set up on Discord, we'll be here to help you with that.